Hello again, it's James Harter here. I hope you're doing really well. So today I wanted to look at Logic's Marquee tool. I find it a super, super useful tool and quite frankly, I'm shocked why some people aren't using it. So I'm gonna show you a few reasons why I think you should be using it. As always, if you think this video is the best thing since bread has been sliced, then hit the like and also hit the subscribe and notification bell and I'll let you know of upcoming videos. And lastly, if you sign up to the mailing list below, I'll send you some free stuff, a few things you can use in your mixes and to help your mixes. Okay, so we're here in Logic. Now, firstly, let's just get it set up. I have it set up all the time, but there are a couple of ways that you can do it. So. Firstly, if you want to go the slow way, then you can just change the tool like so. Okay, that, that's a great way of doing it. You could also set it up on the secondary click. That can be really useful too. You know, so every time you hit command, it's going to change to the marquee. Very useful. Or there's a much more useful way. If you go to Logic Pro X, Preferences, General, and to Editing, and then make sure that you have these two things clicked. Pointer tool in Tracks provides Fade tool click zone and marquee tool click zones. Now you'll notice things will be slightly different. And for those of you who are fans of Pro Tools, it will essentially will respond like the multi-tool in Pro Tools, very, very similarly. So as we're in a different part of the waveform, you'll notice that it changed to the marquee tool. Okay, there we go, nice and easy, and you can use it whenever you're in the lower half. Okay, so firstly, one of the really useful things that this can be great for is deleting unused or unwanted audio, especially if you get stems in from a mix and you've got all these bits either side that you don't need when you need, you know, when you're looking, when you're trying to top and tail things. Well, with the marquee tool, just select what you're getting rid of, like all of that, for example, hit delete or backspace, and it's gone. Boom, okay, nice and easy. Now it doesn't have to be those endings, it can be these little bits in between here, like so, look at that, oh, lovely. Oh, how, oh, how fast is that? Oh, beautiful, yeah, love it, love it. Okay, wonderful job. Also, let's use it to just make, make some edits. If I wanna just cut this section here, instead of having to go all the way to the scissors tool, which is a really, really long way to go, if this is a part where I want to make the cut, I can just double click and the cut is made, lovely. In the same way, say I've got this section here and I want to cut either side of it. Instead of going that long-winded way again of getting the scissors out and cutting either side of it, whatever's selected here, now I can just click anywhere inside there and it's made the cuts either side. And I've got that new region that I've made there. Wonderful. Now also what I can do with that, so I've seen that you've been able to cut either side and delete and whatnot. You might not want to delete that, you might want to just mute it. Well, again, instead of having to cut either side, whilst that is selected, Control and M like you would do to mute any region and it will make the cuts and mute that section instantly, nice and quick. Now the other one that I really like when using this is being able to copy sections without making it too much of a mess to everything else. So let's go, so we've got some drums over here and we wanna copy another bar of it. So I've just uh, made a cut on there already. Boom, now what I can do, say I wanted to copy this bar and put it somewhere, just so you know, because I've got my snap set up to smart, it is actually smartly snapping to the grid. So it's actually going in a, in a very logical way and just making its selection on the grid markings there. So it's really useful. If I want to copy this over here, of course, one way to do it is to make the cut. There we go like I said before you just click it and then like you'd usually do for copy and hold alt and drag it over and there we go nicely copied but now my region over here has cuts and I don't necessarily want that I want it all joined together of course I could select them again command J and they're joined together or let's cut out that whole other step because that was a very very long step and I could have done a lot of other things in that time now at this point before making any cuts hold alt as though you're going to be copying and then drag that over to where you want to copy it doesn't matter let's go there now it's made the copy but you'll notice it hasn't cut the audio. The audio remains as it was. Nice and clean and tidy. I like that a lot. Now, one other thing you can use this for, and this is a penultimate one, I guess, is anywhere you make this marquee point, anywhere you leave it, that is where the audio is gonna play from. Okay, so if we go, we can go over here. There.
Okay, lovely. One thing to remember though, is to just make sure that you've got the settings enabled over here. When you click on the play cursor, if you right click play from marquee selection, just make sure that that is on, otherwise it won't do it. It should be on by default, but sometimes you turn it off. Now, next up is a very cool one indeed. For those of you who use Pro Tools and love a bit of tab to transient, this is essentially Logic's version of tab to transient. Now, tab to transient is really cool because once you set it up and you hit, keep hitting tab, it will of course move on to the next transient. So really good when you're editing drums or anything with clear spikes in the audio like that. Now let's uh, let's go to some drums because that makes a lot of sense. And I'll show you what we, what we can do. So on this channel, this is a drum channel. So I'll just engage the marquee like so. And now anytime I hit the arrow keys, it's gonna move along to the next transient. So you can see that is jumping from transient to transient as it's moving along. Very cool indeed. But it doesn't stop there because you can set up selections from this as well. So let's go from here. If we hold shift and now do the arrow key like you're going tab to transient, it's gonna start setting up that selection. So in this case, the drums are on the grid. They are in time. It's something that is recorded to a metronome. They're all, as you'll see, it's all on the grid and it's all fine. But you might be wanting to make a loop out of something which isn't on the grid. So let's, let's just imagine and it's not on the grid, you'll be able to make that loop selection. And now you've got that ready for you to do whatever you want to do. You could do what we've done before where you might just want to delete it, just hit delete. Or you might want to just actually make a selection, then just click it and there you go. Or maybe you want to set up a loop. So in this position where you're in now, if you hit Command U, that's going to loop that selection that you've just made. So it's instantly set up the cycle range. Beautiful. But now, lastly, is one more cool thing you can do with it just in this same position we're in now. If you hit Command and Backslash, it's going to cut everything either side of that selection. So now we've got our, we didn't need anything else in a drum track apparently. So now we've got our loop and we can do whatever we want with it. Let's just solo that. Lovely. And there you go. So there are a selection of reasons why to use the marquee tool. If you're not using it already, hopefully that will give you a few good examples of why you should be using it. I have that set up all the time. I never, I never change it because to be honest, I don't see the point. I find the tool so powerful. It just makes sense to leave it on all the time. Now, what have I missed? What else can you do with the marquee tool that I'm not doing here? Why don't you leave some comments below and we can start talking about that and maybe share some of the other things that you do. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks very much for coming. I had a lovely time. I'll see you next time.